Hey guys, just working on the keyboard today because it's too hard to clean a space just for a small video. Um, I've got myself here a Adler Lady Calculator. This one was uh, built in about 1976. Um, there was actually a, also a matching one, uh, the Adler Sir, which was a black colour with um, silver across the top here. Um, so one for the lady and one for the man. It was actually given to me by my mum. Um, it was the first calculator that she bought when she started working with her first paycheck. It's got a little bit of heirloom quality to it, a little bit of sentimental value. So I thought I would take it apart, as you do with your heirlooms, and see what's inside. Um, it's actually got a little bit of corrosion. Well, you can see the mismatched batteries here. There was a little bit of corrosion on the, uh, on the terminals from an older set of batteries. So we'll, um, I'll have to take it apart anyway to clean that out. But uh, yeah, it was a uh, Looks like a little neat unit. You can see here it actually still works. Six, seven, eight. Oh, can't get the ninth. It's got it's got nine digits, but it won't actually use a ninth. I think the ninth digit up here is for the uh, minus symbol or something. But yeah, little vacuum fluorescent display in there. It's pretty cool. Let's take it apart and see what makes it tick. So I finally got the thing open, it was a bit of a pain, it's got uh, these catches on the side so when that slides on it kind of clips on and it was actually really difficult to get uh, get it undone. But I got it, and let's have a look inside, see what we can find. So yeah, look at that, that's pretty cool. Tiny little VFD, how big is that I wonder, let's, um, let's measure that, what do we got? around about 48 mil by 10 mil 48 by 10 that's pretty cool um one two three four five six seven eight nine digit yeah with decimal point that's all right now let's pull that out oh that's <laughs> no wires in this thing the uh, battery compartment, it's just got, you can see that there, it's got spring terminals, just spring strip. And then when this PCB is mounted, it just pushes down onto that. So that's a double sided PCB there, like a phenolic sort of resin PCB. So if you, positive and negative on the back of the uh, uh, keypad. Oh wow. You can see the chip under there, I'll just carefully bend this up. There we go. There's our um, our chip. It's a capacitor in the way. Look at that. That's gold plated. That's all right, isn't it? What is it? It's a sharp. One L one two zero zero two. I might look that up and um, see if we can find some data on that. There's a little thing over here. What's that? That looks like a Something it's got multiple pins. DCT-09. We'll have a look at that too. Yeah, a couple of transistors. Oh, we've got two transistors in there. Wow, that's pretty fancy for the mid 70s. And uh, just some electros and passives, power supply sort of stuff for the VFD. Yeah, only single-sided for that one. Yeah, let's have a let's have a look at that um that chip a bit closer. That's that's pretty cool. I've just had a look online. I can't actually find any information on this chip except that it's an eight to nine digit calculator processor for calculators with a VFD. So it seems like that this is both the CPU or the processor that does all the calculations, and it's got drivers in it um, that drive the uh, the display, um, which is pretty interesting. A combined chip there. It's a white ceramic, like it's actual, not the black sort of epoxy plastic, it's actual real ceramic. And um, gold plated pins, gold plated uh, cap on there. So if I were to take that off, I would see the bare die under there. Um, yeah. It's actually really thin as well. I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to get it in the light there. It's only a couple millimeters thick, the actual package. So yeah. 
And this thing over here, what's that? That's a DCT-09. Let's see if we can find something on that one too. And once again we've come up blank, but I've had a look at the uh, circuit here and it heads through to uh, the diodes and the transistors. So I'd say that's probably the uh, transformer to give us uh, the differing voltages needed for the VFD. Um, you know, the high voltage and what three AAA batteries can put out. Because it seems to go through the, this is obviously a oscillator here, these two transistors where it goes through. And then it's also um, heading to the uh, VFD itself. So it's probably applying some sort of bias voltage or some sort of thing like that. But yeah, it's pretty much, there's not much to it. I might take the um, the keypad off, see what we got under there. If it's if they feel like springs, and seeing it's from the 70s, if it was rubber, I'd expect those buttons to be a lot more soft and mushy than what they are. So um, yeah, we might I might just take that off and have a look. All right, so I've just undone the eight screws holding that this keypad on. Eight screws is quite a quite a bit there. What have we got? Oh yeah. Ah, the contacts themselves are the springs. So I'll just oh, it's a one big panel. No, no. Yes, yes, it is. And they've got springs underneath there. Okay, okay. So what they're doing, I'm not gonna. Move this around too much. But basically, oh, that's a former. See, if you can see the hole, just I'll put my finger underneath there. You can see that hole through there. So when you push on a button, there's a pin that pushes through that. And then you've got this. Uh, if I can, hang on. You've got these metal pieces. Ah, there we go. These metal pieces here. One for each button. Focus. And you can see the middle tab, that flexes and then touches the, the PCB. And each, so that's, yeah, yeah, okay. So there's four corners which hold the middle piece away from the PCB. One of those actually touches a contact. If you can see, one, two, three, and four in a square. The one in this corner... I'll point to it with this. This one right there is the contact. One, two, and three are just like just dummies. So when you're poking through, I'm gonna just tilt the, tip these out. When you're poking through the hole, like that, it's pushing down on the centerpiece and then touching the PCB. So, what are these buttons looking like? I'll pull one of these out because I don't want to get the order wrong. That's a plus button. Now, and the hole's just big enough. Focus. For the, uh, the centre pin there to poke through, but not the spring. So, the spring is able to uh, stay captive and return the, the button to the Unpressed state once you lift your finger off. Well, that's all right. So it's not actually individual buttons. It's they didn't use yeah individual buttons. They used a whole array of parts to make one big grid of multiple buttons on there. Yeah, it's not too bad. It looks looks like it's pretty well made actually. I mean it's phenolic, but I mean there's eight eight screws holding that thing in. Holding just the, the board there together. So all I've got to do really to fix this is get rid of the green gunge. If I pull that out carefully, I can show you what I'm talking about. Look at this. Oh the green green death. So I'm gonna that's probably from a uh, that's from an alkaline battery, so I'm gonna put that into some vinegar and uh, neutralize that, then give it a bit of a brush. It's probably taken the uh, the plating off. Hopefully it hasn't gone all the way through to the brass underneath, but you know, I can't really do much about it. I could probably get some tinning, uh, I could probably get some tinning solution and uh, put that in and then re-tin it. Like what you do with your PCBs to tin the bare, the bare copper. But uh, yeah, to start with, I'm just gonna get rid of that green stuff and um, Put all this back together. 
hopefully I don't drop this and get the uh, the buttons everywhere because that would be a little bit of a shame. I'm going to put that over here where it's nice and safe. But yeah, that's pretty much all she wrote. 1970s, uh, late 70s, mini calculator. It's pretty cool. I like that chip. That looks really cool. Alright, I'll fix this and put it back together and uh, we'll see you next time.